good morning students uh, so welcome to the flipped class uh, lecture so i'll be recording this uh, for the especially for the sequential circuit this is uh, a kind of uh, off uh, the uh, course content basically uh, i basically uh, want to you know introduce the sequential circuit so that it will set you in a good platform for uh, studying the uh, static timing analysis actually so with that intention let me proceed further uh, so uh, today's class uh, today's uh, lecture mostly i will focus on the um, um, uh, uh, the, the, the basic building of the sequential circuit or what is the, what is what is why the sequential circuit is essential uh, in any digitalized design and uh, such kind of an uh, um, uh, 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 lecture um, uh, I will uh, take it forward from here okay so I hope that you will it will be much uh, useful for you and beneficial for you uh, for attending the interviews and uh, covering up some of the basic uh, uh, I mean uh, I mean questions that you have you know okay thanks moving forward so today's outline is uh, uh, first we'll see why sequencing is essential then what are the components of the sequencing element uh, elements and then uh, i think the max and minimum really i won't uh, focus right now so i would say that i will covering i'll be covering up only the first two topics today okay excuse me fine moving forward so now a combinational logic uh, you know that you're very familiar with the combinational logic uh, so it doesn't require any uh, you know you know the, uh, the what they call is the, the concept of uh, using the uh, you know the outputs uh, for determining the next stage input so there is no states involved in the combinational logic it depends upon only the uh, how the input level switch, switches and uh, then what what output should be so based on that, so based on your uh, Boolean expressions, you can build up this uh, combination logic circuits. Okay, whereas uh, sequential uh, sequential logic is a little bit different. So it is not that uh, not not uh, you know um, though it uses the uh, combination logic elements, uh, but the operational and functionality of the sequential logic uh, depends upon the clock, and in fact it depends upon the uh, states, the previous state. The present state depends, uh, and uh, that depends on uh, that drives the what state it should be, the output state it should be. So that is how uh, sequential logic functions. Okay, so basically it requires previous, current, and future. Obviously, fine. Then uh, we call the states. We call these uh, these and uh, the sequencing. Uh, I mean, they say the happening of the sequencing steps as the states. Basically, we refer to that to that states. Uh, sometimes more specifically in a quite complex sequential logic uh, cycles they refer to as tokens basically okay so some of the basic example of a sequential logic is given here one is the sequence one is the uh, finite state machine based uh, uh, circuit here okay and the next one is pipelining so in finite state machines you might have studied in your digital logic design that uh, you know you can draw it as a state machine diagram where uh, you know you will have the uh, each states mention and uh, from one state to other state and what conditions are there to go or move from one state to the other state or you want to remain in the say, same state so that depends uh, that kind of a diagram you might have studied so this is the basically the hardware of that basically okay so it has a combination logic and it has a, 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 a what do you call uh, this is a, a, a sequencing element where we basically it is we call this is either the flip flop or latches Okay, anything you can use, but uh, we know that mostly latches or I mean the, the flip flops are preferred. But in certain application, latches are also preferred. So we'll see what is a latch. What is a latch? I think you must be knowing what is a latch and what is a flip flop. So I I don't think so. You require any explanation on that. But look at this one combination logic. It gives an uh, uh, output to the um, the uh, the sequencing element, and then from there there is a feedback there to the combination logic. So basically, the entire circuit depends upon the previous state, present state, and then that that will drive the uh, the, uh, the the state of the future. Okay, fine. Now coming coming up to here, this pipelining, pipelining is basically uh, is uh, what you call is uh, you will have a sequencing element and you will have a combination logic. Okay, and that is basically pipelined. Okay, 
So this kind of a pipelining is generally required uh, 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 in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a digital IC design, where you will have uh, you know the you know uh, the, the flow of the signal you know wherever wherever that you require you will have a flow of the signal from each stage is one stage to the other stage, and uh, this, the, the, the number of uh, pipeline stages depends upon how much uh, you know, how much fast you want, how slow you want. Sometimes some signal, some signal path will be faster, some signal path will be slower. So depends on that whether you want the faster path. You want to be. It's, it's very difficult to make the slow, the slow path faster. So what be the basic idea? What is in order to maintain the sequence or may are making it uh, making it sequential or are syncing it syncing the signals where basically what we do is that we make the faster path slower by adding some of the sequencing elements okay okay so basically you are making it uh, make, make, make introducing a delay here basically so inevitably you are you're, uh, adding a delay and that what happens sometimes it will add delay to the even to the slower path so that becomes that is what it, this is basically a uh, deliberately introduced delay so this have to be done because if you don't have, if you, if you don't maintain the sequence, or uh, maintaining ma maintaining the sequencing concept or sequencing techniques uh, in the digitalized design, you will have an erroneous output. So, it's better to have a delay than having an erroneous output. So, it's basically we need uh, such kind of a sequencing uh, techniques in a digital IC design. Okay. So, tokens move through pipeline at a constant speed. Okay. Uh, that uh, that's it basically uh, it moves uh, moves at the uh, constant speed. Based, it depends upon how many uh, uh, stages of pipe cutting that you are using. That depends. That basically have to uh, decided upon by uh, by a design engineer based on how how much sequencing is required, how much delay have to be introduced. Okay. So example of a sequencing or pipelining is basically we can call it a fiber optic cable. Okay. Light pulses can be called as a token. Okay, so next pulse will uh, send before first reaches uh, the end of the cable. Okay, so then um, so no need no need for hardware to separate the pulses here in this case. Dispersion sets minimum time between pulses. Okay, that's the dispersion. That that's basically optical delay, I would say. So we basically call this as the pipe planning in uh, wave pipe planning in cycles. Okay, optical uh, obviously we know that optical communication and optical interconnects have become. Uh, very popular because of the, uh, the the amount of speed that it offers uh, for uh, data uh, data transmission. Okay, so in most uh, transmission, uh, obviously most cycle dispersion is basically high. So we say that uh, we basically have to what we have to have what we have to do is we have to delay the fast token so that they can catch up to the slow ones. Okay, so so now how do you do the uh, uh, I mean delay? How do you introduce the delay? I am using the flip flops. Okay, so um, now as I told you that uh, you know you make inevitably you will make the slower path also uh, more more slow. So that is what uh, we basically uh, ended end up with uh, such kind of uh, techniques. Okay, so we call this as the sequencing overhead. So some people uh, call this as the clocking overhead. I think clocking because why it is so because uh, flip flops have clocks so based on the clocks only. Uh, the flip flops uh, gives the output, so it's basically we call it as the clock thing overhead also. Okay, fine. Okay, so these are the uh, in uh, I mean side effects of uh, maintaining the sequence. Okay, so let's moving well, let's move let's move forward. So let us look at the sequencing elements now here. So latch is a uh, level sensitive uh, sequential element that we know about it, and flip flops are edge triggered. And uh, look at this timing diagram. I will show show you. Uh, you must be knowing about it. So, for a latch, you see, you have a latch. It's not edge triggered. It is whenever the clock is on, or when when during the clock is on. I would say the time the, the devices or the, the the element is uh, transparent. Okay. So Q uh, D follows uh, Q follows D. It D passes through. Okay. So you can see here, clock is on, and the data changes in between the clock during the uh, during the clock uh, during the on time of the clock. So you can see the output changes. Let us look at the flip flops. Uh, during the clock, whatever the data is there, it catches up, so and it waits for the next uh, clock to uh, transfer the data. Or uh, no, yeah, I would say it's, it, it's, it's it can be said, said in that way because when you're looking at a, a sequencing uh, logic uh, through a signal path, I would say it's 
just it just uh, it just uh, transmits the data only when the clock is on i would say in that way okay fine moving forward let's uh, use a simple past transistor as a sequencing element here look here so we have a clock here this is an nmos past transistor we have studied the past transistor earlier uh, during the lab sessions so and you have realized it uh, for a mux i, I guess so multiplexes you have used and you have realized it you have realized the xor gate using this also but look at the deal as a single nmos uh, transistor can act like a D flip flop. So D data is goes into the uh, diffusion. This is basically you can have this drain, this is source, and this is your um, gate basically. So these are diffusions basically. Okay. So usually what we'll do, we'll give the input to the gate, and you have gate oxide is there, so the impedance is pretty much higher. So at the input side, any input side, any input side uh, electronic circuit system basically we need a higher input impedance. Otherwise. Obviously, some amount of noise also can enter. That is one thing. Other one is it's uh, basic. It will be sensitive to noise. One thing that is one thing. Another thing is it can damage the because uh, obviously if, there is, if, the, if this is loaded, the driven high current driven drives it, it can basically damage the diffusion regions. Okay, so that is the disadvantage here. But anyway, what do you see? Whenever the clock is there, the transistor passes the data to the Q. D is passed to the Q basically. So this is a a simple. A single transistor D latch. It's not a, a flip flop. It's just a latch. Okay. So whenever the Q was or when the during the clock uh, clock on time, D is passed to Q. Okay. So that is uh, another thing. So what are, what is the what are the advantages we see? Pros is is tiny obviously, and it is uh, it has low clock load. The so clock clock loads are pretty much lower. So that's the advantage that we have. But we have plenty number of uh, drawbacks here. VT drops is there. We have, you have realized it in the lab. So there is a VT drop, and uh, it is not restoring. So as you keep using uh, many number of uh, uh, you know stages, what will happen? Each each uh, VT drops is added, and then what will happen is that it won't restore the logics at all for you. Okay, so it's not restoring. And then uh, back driving. Back driving means basically if any signal comes in this way because this is the diffusion region. So that's the only advantage you have. If you give a gate a input to the gate. There is not, it's, it's not a, a back driving actually. So it can drive only this way, this way. It can be driven in the other way. But look at the diffusion because since it's a diffusion, it goes source and drain. Basically, it's the current flows through. It can cover, it can flow through the other way also. Okay, so it can be back driven. That is the issue that we basically face here. Then you have output noise sensitivity. Obviously, diffusion. I told you, you know, diffusion is uh, basically uh, whatever the noise is there, it can affect the input side also. Okay. It is quite sensitive to noise and it is quite dynamic that we know it obviously. So it is and as it keeps changing, it keeps, there is no such greater control here because of the diffusion inputs and diffusion outputs. I mean obviously the outputs basically mostly used in diffusions, okay, include diffusions only. But uh, input is deficient, that is the only problem that we basically face here. Deficient input, that is the problem. Right? Okay, moving forward. Uh, so, to overcome some of the uh, issues with the single transistor, uh, single transistor D latch, we can go ahead with building up a uh, trans transmission gate based uh, uh, D flip flops. I think we have seen the transmission gate and we have given you some of the uh, some a few uh, basics ideas about uh, the uh, NMOS, uh, I mean the transmission gate, which uses both NMOS and PMOS. So, when you do that like this, obviously the drop won't be there. Drops gets cancelled each other. I think I have explained this one uh, during the lab session. Okay, so the VT and VT, uh, I mean, it obviously um, it's complementary. So VT, uh, I mean, the threshold voltage for the NMOS is positive and the threshold voltage of the P and P MOS is negative, and obviously it cancels each other during both the bo during both the logic uh, during the uh, logic the passing of the logic zero and the passing of the logic one. Okay, so now what are the advantages that you have? No VT drops. Okay, and what are the disadvantages? Requires inverted clock. Okay, so you have you are giving a clock here, positive clock to the NMOS, whereas you have to give a negative clock to the PMOS. Only then both the devices will be switched on, switched on simultaneously, and the D can pass through. Okay, so whenever there is a clock, and whenever when pi is one, pi zero will pi uh, pi bar will be zero, and both the devices will be on, and D is passed through. Okay, so that's the concept here. Okay, now um, 
let's uh, look at uh, one, one kind of a, a different kind of a thing here and this is this can solve some of the problems inverting buffer we call it as okay so inverting buffer inverting buffer means basically what uh, uh, inverters obviously inverters uh, if you use two inverters you will become you will get a buffer okay but if you use only one inverter obviously the output is an inverted output so we call this as, and it also gives you a delay and it, it, it basically restores the logics also okay there is no problem with the logic levels issues only that it can restore so basically call this as the inverting buffer basically instead of just calling it as an inverter we calling it as an inverter buffer okay fine now look here uh, so transmission gate is there that's not a problem as usual in the previous uh, slide we saw that one and at the output side you have an inverter there okay so now uh, in the previous uh, case also we can see back driving is still possible back driving is still possible okay because it's a diffusion okay and when the clock is on obviously q part of the data is available in the queue it can go to d also okay so back driving is possible but if you connect like this back driving can be avoided because inverter obviously the input is given to the gate so whatever is available here is it won't be given to the gate it won't come out to the, through the gate basically okay so back driving is avoided in this particular case but look at this one you have uh, an inverter at the input side so what will happen is the input is not diffusion so when the input is not diffusion obviously it will provide us a better driving capability okay i mean uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's a better driving capability for the uh, transmission gate but for the previous stage it's obviously provides us a better uh, driving capability but because obviously it can protect the diffusion input basically okay so better driving capability for the previous stage because of any so, so any 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 uh, non restoring levels it comes in here this buffer can this inverting buffer can restore that level that is one thing in that way i'm saying it's a better better uh, better uh, uh, passing of passing the better passing of the uh, signals the signal levels that's one thing another one thing is that your diffusion is protected diffusion input is protected because diffusion input has low resistance and that obviously the previous stage can damage the diffusion input so that can be protected here so these are these are two ways of uh, redesigning the uh, transmission gate based uh, d flip flops okay i mean d latches here okay oh, sorry now look at this one is restoring as i told you explaining then no back driving okay fixes either the output noise sensitivity or the diffusion input so output noise sensitivity is basically this one fixes the output noise sensitivity okay and this one fixes the diffusion input Okay, so what is the disadvantages? Our only disadvantage is that obviously it will have inverter output because D, whatever you give, it gets inverter and you will have only Q bar. And whereas here also, you have Q bar. So this is the only disadvantage that we have. Moving forward, so before getting into the next uh, type of uh, design strategies, so what I what I'll see here is that this I have told you in the class that I will be handling this one or I will be discussing about this particular inverter. We call this a, we call this as the tri-state inverter. So inverters generally you will have to only two states either it will be in the zero or the output will be either in the zero or or, or it will have one based on the inputs but in this case you see you have uh, instead of having one pmos and one nmos you have two pmoses and two nmos so the top pmos and the uh, bottom nmos is both gates are tied together and it is given to the input x okay and you can see here the other pmos and other nmos has been uh, driven by a clock c c bar okay and you take the output from between these two drains okay so now uh, what is the advantage here so when the, when the clock is one and the, when the c is one c bar is zero this pmos and this nmos is on so whatever the data is available obviously gets inverted at the output okay so when the clock when the clock is zero this is one pmos is off nmos is off so the output will be basically it is not this basically the uh, outputs are disconnected from these two devices this this pmos and this nmos this pmos and this nmos is the actual inverter and you have uh, you are introducing another pmos and nmos so such that that you, you are creating an another state called as the high input state so when the clocks are when the clock is zero that is say on the c is zero and c bar is one the output will be in the high input state so what is the advantage of or what is the purpose of having such kind of a circuit if you ask and you can have it's not only inverter you can have a, an uh, 
uh, price state NAND, price state NOR, whatever you want to have, you can have. Except that you basically make sure that you have uh, uh, devices connected like this, PMOS and NMOS connected at the output like this with the clock as the input. Okay. So, what is the purpose of doing such kind of a uh, network is like? See, uh, inverters are, uh, you, know, you know that inverters are gener generally used like this, you know, that it is being used like this basically. Okay. So, uh, in certain, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what I can say, in certain uh, cases or certain uh, applications, what I would say that you may not uh, want to drive the uh, output or you do not want, you do not want the signal to pass to the next stage. In such cases, you can control it basically. Okay. So, look at this one. This is called, this is basically called as a tri-state buffer, where you can see here, uh, this is basically an inverter, this two, this two, this one PMOS and this PMOS is inverter. And you can see another stage inverter is there because this output has been connected to this gate, gate, this gate, and this output is connected to this gate. Now look at this one. Then another two stages are there. This is again basically looks like an inverter for you, and this is again an inverter for you. Okay. So what basically it is? This C bar goes into this particular inverter, and C goes into this particular inverter. So what happens is that when you give a clock C bar as zero, C bar as zero. Okay. and this becomes 1 okay so c bar is 0 basically what will happen this will on this pmos okay and this is off this nmos so this pmos is on so what will happen is whatever the data that you want to uh, either drive drive the output to the i mean drive the output this one this this basically suppose let me say the input is 1 obviously what will happen this as uh, our input is 0 what will happen this pmos is basically connected through this to this particular device okay so it can pull down the output to zero it is a buffer basically so zero and you are giving the output is pulled down to ground okay and if it is uh, if it is we basically say and then this one obviously this is basically when this is zero this is one so this is one means basically what this device is on this device is on and what will happen is uh, anyway, x is x is we kept it as zero only. So zero means obviously, obviously this is off. Okay, this is off. So this is off. Whereas this is on. Okay, and when this is on, what what we will do? What this what 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 happens? This is on, and basically what will happen is uh, this PMOS is basically on. This PMOS is on. I'm sorry. This this PMOS is basically on. Sorry, uh, this is this is zero, no zero. Obviously, this is on. This goes in. This is obviously VDT is connected to this. So since VDT is connected to this particular thing, obviously this will be off. We know that. And whereas this is uh, this is one, this is one. So this is basically connected. So this is ground. This is ground. Basically, this is on. So obviously, output will be zero. Okay. So now what happens is like you, you are basically doesn't you are not basically uh, uh, connecting the previous stage to the next stage. So basically connecting the next stage either to the VDT or to the ground based on your inputs on the clocks. Okay, so you you can have a control whether in the next in a in a in a in a multi-stage path you want to either connect the if you don't want to connect the uh, uh, next stage with the previous stage. You can choose to either connect to the uh, VDD and the ground based on the clock that you get. That is the concept basically about this particular uh, uh, inverter. Okay. So now, uh, so look, look at this. This is symbol for the tri-state inverter. Okay. Tri-state inverter, not the buffer. Okay. Tri-state inverter. So uh, this circuit basically. This circuit basically. Okay. So what we have here is X and Y is there. You have C and C bar. So C and C bar is basically when. Uh, C, C is 1, C bar is 0, okay, this basically, uh, y, will be, y, y will be equal to, uh, y, will, y will be inverted of x, otherwise what will happen, it will be in the high impedance state, okay, so that is what the concept is. Now why I am explaining this is because why, so we can have a latch which is based on the tri-state feedback uh, technique, where you have an uh, tri transmission gate as your deep flip block, okay, and you want to, um, um, uh, basically, you know, uh, keep the uh, output, uh, or you want to basically, uh, what I can say, keep the output, uh, because it's basically a memory element. Okay, so you want to keep the output uh, 
uh, in the loop basically so that it won't we won't lost the we won't lose the data basically so in such case what we basically do you have an inverter here and you have a tri state buffer okay so the tri state buffer and keep keep on feeding back the data okay and depends upon the clock that you give you have a clock control you can either drive, drive it to high hyperstate state high hyperstate state means basically what will happen this is disconnected so you can choose to either like if i send 5 and 5 bar so 5 is 1 5 bar is 0 data goes in okay and 5 is 1 and 5 bar is 0 so if this is the case what will happen this uh, this 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 inverter is disconnected okay this inverter is disconnected so what will happen this inverter is disconnected so there is no feedback okay so the data go the data have already gone in but the data is already available here so what will happen in the next clock pulse even even if you remove the clock zero if phi is becomes zero and phi bar becomes one so phi is zero phi bar becomes one what will happen the tri state uh, the buffer gets on so the data is kept f f feeding back so it remains at the output even though the clock changes okay because that's what it is what's the, that's what the latch is yeah it has to uh, remain it has to uh, uh, i mean the, the output should remain in the previous state obviously unless you otherwise you change with the with, whenever there is a clock is on in this that has to be changed so what in the next state so uh, as long as the uh, clock is this clock is zero this the dry state buffer is on so it keeps feeding back the data keep feeding back and keep, uh, and making the previous state uh, uh, as it is it won't change the previous state so when the clock changes obviously this tri state buffer disconnects and the data goes in and it is available at the output okay but you have will, you will have the inverted output that's the only uh, thing that you basically have in this particular design okay so and this kind of static glasses are very essential because in the previous cases and all you can't see if you remove the clock the data goes have you noticed in the previous all the previous case it basically doesn't act like a latch but we say it can act like a latch because why we say because whenever the clock is there it can do d, d follows q but whatever when you when you remove the clock what will happen we don't know what will happen to the output state output state may go go to low because it depends upon the output capacitance how much capacitance it uh, how much capacitor capacitor capacitance values are there based on that only the data remains otherwise if the capacitance is very low capacitance obviously it discharges faster but that is that should not happen in a D latch. So D latch, it should uh, stay in the previous state unless otherwise there is a, the clock is on and the there is a data available there. Okay, so this is this is and this is the actual design of a latch. Okay, so you should you have to use a tri-state inverter. Look at this one now. You now you know this is the typical example of the application of a tri-state inverter. So tri-state inverter is very essential in your latch design and even in the flip-flop designs also okay so what you have is static very good we need static because we want to remind the uh, we want to keep the previous state as it is we should not change it okay then it's a back driving risk is there why it is so why it is back driving risk is there because when the tri-state buffer is on obviously the, it will go and drive the transmission gate uh, sorry uh, transmission gate yeah diffusion because it's a diffusion code it can Right, so there is a problem there. So we need to fix that one, and uh, that can be fixed by using a buffer, inverter buffer kept at the input side. So this would be uh, uh, almost perfect D latch design. Okay, so we are just basically unwinding it how this uh, D latch uh, uh, is is basically arrived at this particular design stage. Okay, so now all this one you know transmission gate and you need you need. Uh, inverter there uh, because you, you want to protect the output sensi uh, output noise sensitivity you want to avoid the output noise sens sensitivity you have the dry, you have the uh, uh, i mean the inverter uh, i mean inverted buffer there and also that you need a tri state buffer there so that it can uh, the output can remain in the previous state okay so now if you include uh, another inverter here obviously it can protect the uh, input uh, deficient deficient deficit input here okay so if you put that one what will happen the output becomes q it's not q bar anymore okay so that's the ad advantage that we basically have hopefully that you have uh, come to this point now so now it it can fix us the diffusion input and it, 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 it is basically non inverting also okay so all those uh, are the advantages that we have now okay now uh, buffered output 
can have a buffer output instead of having the output directly there you can have a buffer output here basically so if you have a buffer output you will not have a back driving problem at all in this case basically okay you're taking output here not from here if you take the output here only you, you back driving pro problem can happen through this train side try set in but since you are getting the output here there is no problem of non uh, non uh, there is no problem of back driving so very nice uh, design here you know so people have uh, thought about it and they have bought a simple very simple design only but you know it gives a lot of advantages for us okay okay fine so it is widely used in standard cells very robust rather uh, large is basically obviously a lot of other too many too many inverters we use too, too many inverter buffers we use is pretty, pretty much larger and then it is obviously it is slower because you have too many um, inverter buffers and it tri state inverters all those things are there obviously it is basically uh, basically uh, i mean uh, slower okay and then you have a high clock loading also is there okay now because too many clock loading because you have clocks here and you have clocks here too many clock loadings is also there okay so now there is another concept is here they use that this is basically called as data path latch which there is no buffer at the input side okay so basically then you will get two bar there only you will get only two bar there so it's uh, basically smaller and is faster and it's an unbuffered input that's the only drawback that we basically have okay so now we can go ahead to build the flip flop design so flip flop design basically what a latch which is having a master and a slave network okay so look at a simple master and slave without any tri state buffer you can have you can have a you can have an inverter and a transmission gate inverter and a transmission gate and an inverter okay and five five bar five five bar okay so uh, so this we can become a uh, flip flop but the best one you should have is that with the tri state buffer which we have uh, which we have uh, uh, see, seen that in the previous slide this is one d play d latch and this is another d latch with basically having a q and q bar outputs this is a perfect flip flop that we can build okay <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so all this one can be built uh, nicely easily and i i basically want you to uh, design this one in the lab so anyway i will give you the task in the lab okay so we can go through it this 5 5 bar is given to so make sure when you are giving a 5 5 bar so look here 5 is given to the bubbled one 5 bar is given to the unbubbled one and look here 5 is given to the unbubbled one five bar is given to the bubbled one so you have to uh, what you can complement this clocks i can similarly you can see that it, i am and complementing this clocks also so when you do that and obviously flip flops works better okay so whenever the whenever this uh, this particular latch is on as when the clock is on this particular latch is on and then when this this will be off this will be in the previous state okay so when the clock comes in here obviously this will be okay so when the so when it is triggered in when it when the clock goes either uh, positive or negative or when, basically this is a positive edge going flip flop so when there is when it is positive what will happen the data enters in and uh, when, when the positive means like in the edge once the, once in the edge when it goes in it's basically uh, it it basically samples the data and in the and after that when this becomes uh, clock becomes one it basically process the data and comes out and whenever during that, that time whenever the whenever this clock changes there is no happening here there is no change in the data that's why it's basically called as edge triggering okay so i'll stop right here and this is uh, the, about the sequential uh, uh, i mean uh, circuit uh, circuit design in the cmos uh, ic is ic um, i mean what i can say i say cmos technology and uh, i'll stop right here and i will give you the uh, i mean quiz uh, questions probably uh, then you can uh, answer that and you can uh, leave the class so i don't i we don't have to be in the class you can just be uh, you know uh, anywhere else. but make sure that you attend the quiz okay thank you bye